Hi everybody and welcome to a new exciting episode in the Generating Sound with Neural Networks series. Last time we built the decoder components of our autoencoder, today we want to bring together all the different pieces we've implemented so far, namely the, the encoder and decoder, and finish off our autoencoder. Once we've done that, the next step will be that of training our autoencoder using the MNIST dataset. So let's get started. So here we are in our autoencoder class. If you guys remember from last time, we had this met method called underscore build. And here we do two things right now. So we build the encoder, we build the decoder, and we have like this third thing that we have to uh, implement today, which is building the autoencoder, or in other words, like putting together the encoder and the decoder. So let's uncomment this part. And now that we have like this method, of course, we have to implement it. So let's just do a define build autoencoder. And here we want to do a few things. So first of all, we want to create the model input uh, variable. And this is going to be equal to a private attribute called uh, underscore model input. Okay, now this hasn't been defined yet. We're going to be defining it in a second in one of the methods that we've already implemented. But before, let's just finish off build autoencoder. So now we have the input. Uh, what we want to have now is the output. And the output is going to be given by this um, expression here. And it's going to be basically the decoder self. Uh, yeah, it's not a private uh, attribute. So it's going to be like self decoder. And here we'll pass in the encoder and we'll pass in the model input. So basically here we are uh, kind of like applying the encoder to the input and then the decoder to the output of the encoder. And this is going to be basically like the output of all of our uh, autoencoder model. Okay, so now that we have the model input and the model output, we know how to build the overall model, the autoencoder model, by using the Keras functional API. So we'll do a self.model and here we'll create a model object and we'll pass in the model input and the model output. Okay. So now we've built the autoencoder chaining together the uh, input, the encoder and the decoder. So there's still one thing that we have to finalize here and it's this mod underscore model input attribute that hasn't been assigned yet. So where should we assign this? Well, we should assign it when we are building the encoder. So now let's go down to uh, build encoder. Over here, we have like this method. And as you can see here, we have this uh, encoder uh, input that we, this variable that we create uh, through this method here. Then we create like the convolutional layers, the bottleneck, which is the actual output of the encoder. And at this point, we can assign or we can instantiate this attribute called model input like this, and we are gonna assign to model input the encoder inputs, because obviously the input of the model is the coincides with the input of the encoder. Okay, now another thing that we can do real quick, so that we know that we have like this model input uh, attribute, is to uh, put it up here and just like instantiate that to none. So we're going to have like this underscore model input instantiated to none in the uh, constructor of the autoencoder class. Okay, so now we have built the autoencoder. Uh, and the next step is that of actually uh, seeing this like in action. And so how can we see this? Well, what we want to do is just like um, kind of like modify a little bit this uh, summary uh, method that gives us a summary uh, of the architecture of all the different uh, models that we have in our autoencoder class. So 
Uh, so far, we just like give a summary of the encoder and the decoder, but now what we want to do is add an extra summary uh, that's given like this. So we'll do a self dot model, and this is like the all uh, autoencoder uh, model. And then we want to do the summary of this. Okay, so now let's see whether like we can see uh, like everything. So the summary of all of our models. So I'm gonna just quickly uh, start this up. And okay, so and as you can see, we have all our different pieces here. So we have the encoder model, and this is the summary of that. We have the summary of the decoder, and finally, we have the summary of the autoencoder over here. And as you can see, we have like the encoder input, uh, that's correct, so it's 28 by 28 by 1. Uh, then we have the encoder, and finally, we have the decoder, and the output of the decoder is, as we expect, 28 by 28 by 1. Okay. That's fantastic. Now, the only thing that I really don't like here is the name of the model that's functional one. So we want to give it like a more a meaningful name, which is autoencoder. So let's just go back to um, build autoencoder here. And here in, uh, when we instantiate the model, we want to pass in name and here we'll call this autoencoder. Perfect. So this is right. Okay, so now uh, the next step that remains to, to do is that of actually creating a few methods that will enable us to train the autoencoder uh, model. So what are like these methods? So first of all, we need a compile method and then we need a train method. So let's get started with a compile here. So we'll create a compile method and here we'll pass a, an argument called a learning rate. Okay, so uh, with uh, TensorFlow Keras models, what we need to do is to compile them before uh, using them. So uh, let me just like write down like all the different steps that we need to compile like this, and then yeah, we'll just move on. Okay, so the first thing that we want here is to uh, get an optimizer now we're going to be using Adam as a, an optimizer and that luckily for us is already provided by Keras. And so we can quickly import it by doing from tensorflow.keras.optimizer, we import Adam, as simple as that. Okay, we go back down here and we uh, instantiate Adam like this and we want to pass in a learning uh, rate keyword argument and this is going to be equal to the argument learning rate that we pass to compile. Okay, now what we can do is also just like default this learning rate to something uh, that makes sense, like for example 0.0001, something like that. So now we have the optimizer. The next thing that we want to have is the loss. And in our case, we're gonna be using min squared error. So we'll call this MSC uh, loss. And once again, we need to import um, uh, another object, another class from uh, TensorFlow Keras. And this is the min squared error class. So we'll do a from tensorflow.keras dot losses will import min squared error. Okay, so now let's get back down here and we'll do a min squared error and we'll instantiate this class. Now we have an MSC loss object. Okay, so what we want to do next is actually compile our autoencoder model. So we'll do a self dot model dot compile. Now remember that self dot model is our autoencoder uh, model and it's of course a Keras model. So we can apply the compile method to it, which is native to the API Keras. And here we'll pass in the uh, optimizer uh, that we've chosen 
and the loss that we've also chosen, which is the MSC loss like this. Perfect. Now we are capable of compiling our autoencoder model. The next step is to create a train method. So let's go here, we'll define train. Now train accepts a number of parameters or arguments, the first of which we can call X train. So this is input, uh, the input of the train set. Then we need the, uh, to specify a batch size and we want to also specify the number of epochs we'll run the training for. Okay, now if you're not familiar with all of these uh, concepts like batch size, number of epochs or training set or stuff like that, I highly suggest you to go check out my other series called uh, Deep Learning for Audio with Python. Uh, there I just like talk about all of these concepts in, in great detail, so I'm not going to repeat them like here. I'll just like take for granted that you know them. Okay. Now let's get back here and let's actually implement a train, the train method. So what should we do here? Well, this is like super simple because we can, uh, first of all, uh, like call model and here we can apply the fit method that's yet again another method that comes like um, native to the uh, Keras API. Now, what we want to do with fit here is pass, first of all, X train. And so this is like the input of our training set. And now the next parameter will be that of like the expected output. But now since we are uh, training an autoencoder, so what we expect as an output is like the same uh, values, the same samples that we get as input, because we are trying like to reconstruct um, the output and have it as, as similar as possible to the input. In other words, the output is once again going to be able, uh, it's going to be equal to X train. Okay, now next step is passing in the batch size. So we'll pass in the batch size and then we'll pass in the epochs and the epochs keyword argument will be equal obviously to number of epochs that we've passed into the uh, train method and finally i want to specify another keyword argument called shuffle and i'll put this equal to true this is just a flag it's either true or false and by saying shuffle true what this means is that like all the data will be shuffled before applying them for training okay so that's all we need uh, from this um, train method. So by now we have all the pieces uh, necessary to train an autoencoder. So the next step will be that of actually training one. To train our autoencoder, we'll need a new script. So let me add that to the project. So I'll create a new Python file and I'll call that train.py like this, great. The first thing that we need here is to actually import the autoencoder class that we've just finished building. So we'll do a from autoencoder, we'll import autoencoder like this. Now let's do a if name is equal to main. So basically we're going to have like a very simple Python script here. So what should we do? So the first thing that we want to do is to import the amnist dataset. Now, a couple of words on the amnist dataset. The amnist dataset is a dataset of handwritten digits like this, and it's kind of like a toy dataset that has been used for decades now in machine learning. So we'll be using this as a first approach to autoencoders as well as to variational uh, autoencoders. The great thing, the great advantage is that this comes uh, basically for free directly from uh, TensorFlow and Keras. So we are going to be able like, to pull it. So let's go back to our code. What we want to have here is the X train, then we're going to be having the uh, y train. So these are like the inputs and outputs of the uh, training set. And then we'll have the X, oops, not that, X test and Y uh, test. And now 
we are going to apply a simple function that we'll still have to define that's called load amnest. Okay, so now that we've loaded amnest, really like what we are interested in right now is xtrain. So we'll be using that for training our autoencoder. So here we'll do a autoencoder is equal to train. And here we'll pass a few arguments. So obviously we'll pass x train, the training uh, data set, the input part of it. Then we'll need a, a learning rate. Then we'll need uh, the batch size. And finally, we'll need the number of epochs like this. Now, uh, I've put this in capital letter because these are constants and I want to define them up here. So I'll do learning uh, rates and this I'll put equal to no point, I don't know, like something like this. Okay. Then I'll put in the batch size and the batch size I'll put equal to 32. And finally, epochs will do only, I don't know, like uh, 20 epochs. Uh, it's going to be just like for showing purposes. I don't really want to train like this model like perfectly. Okay, so yeah, this works all good. Now, what we need to actually implement is these two functions here, load, amnes, and train, because we haven't implemented them yet. So let's get started with load amnest. So we'll define it up here. So we'll, oops, what, what was that? Okay, so we'll do a define load amnest like this. Okay, so now the great thing is that amnest, as I said, comes uh, directly from TensorFlow. We can pull it. So how do we do that? Well, there's a, an import. So we can do from tensorflow.keras.datasets, we can import uh, MNIST like this. Okay. Now, once we have this, we can go here and put x train, y train, and then x test and y test like this. And then we can call amnest.load data. Right, so this is all we need to do to load the amnest data set. And it's gonna be packaged uh, like this in this like two tuples where we have the uh, inputs of the training set, the outputs of the training set, and then the inputs and outputs of the test set. Now, from what I recall, uh, Keras uh, shift, uh, divides the uh, MNIST dataset into 60,000 samples for uh, training and 10,000 samples for testing. Okay. Now, uh, what we want to do next is to uh, apply um, normalization. So here, these are all like grayscale um, images between 0 and 20, uh, 255. And so what we want to do is just like normalize those. So how do we do that? Well, we take, for example, x train and we'll do an uh, x train dot s type. So we'll put s type float 32. And then uh, what we'll do, we'll divide this by 255. This way we'll normalize x train, all the samples in x train between zero and one. And then the next thing that we want to do is to add an extra dimension to uh, the, um, the samples because we want to add like the, the channel dimension. So how do we do that? Well, that's quite simple. So we'll do an extrain dot uh, reshape and we'll take x train dot uh, shape and then uh, we'll add a, another dimension like this. We want to do the same thing also to X test. In other words, we want to apply normalization and add an extra dimension, which is the uh, channel dimension. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, it's super simple. We just copy all of this, 
then we take a strain and then we'll just change that for x test so and do a replace for all of these expressions here okay good so now we've normalized both x train and x test and we've added an extra dimension which is the channel so now what remains to do is just to return all of these data sets so we'll return the x train we'll return a y train we'll return x test and finally we'll return y test now the the thing to notice here is that when we go down in the script what we're really using for the time being is only x train we're not really that interested in all of those other um uh, data sets so what we can do is just like use an underscore here instead of like those names just to uh, specify that we don't need those variables really okay now, yeah, let me remove that. Okay, so now we have load amnist, which is great. The next thing and final thing is to create the um, train uh, function here. Now, train function accepts x train, it accepts a learning a rate, it accepts a batch size like this, and it accepts a number of epochs. Okay. Let's do a pass. Okay, so now what we want to do here as a first step is to instantiate an auto encoder object. So I'm going to be reusing this definition. So this instantiation with this specific parameters. So and I'll put it in here. Right. So this is like an auto encoder here we have like the input shape that's 28 by 28 by 1 and in not incidentally uh, this is uh the same shape of uh the amnist data right these are like grayscale images so channel the, uh, the the channel is equal to one and then these are like 28 by 28 pixels images okay and here we just specify the number of like convolutional filters kernels and strides and we say that we want a latent space uh to have dimension equal to two okay so that's for the autoencoder object now what we want to do with this well first of all let's just do a summary so that we can see all of the uh, models and its parameters uh, nicely like on the console then the next step is instead of doing autoencoder dot uh, compile so we want to compile the model and finally we want to do a uh, train like this and for train we need to pass x train we need to pass batch size and we need to pass the number of epochs which in this case is epochs now i forgot one thing which is that in this compiled method i should pass the learning rate because it accepts that so oops not that like this okay so now really we are ready to return the autoencoder which now is also a trained model that's great and that's what we get back here okay so now a quick review of what we've done so far in the training.py script before seeing if it works so as we see here we get the x train so we get the input of the training set uh, by using this uh, load amnist uh, function that we created up here and then we get back the uh, trained autoencoder model by using the train function that we've defined up here and in the train function what we do is we instantiate the autoencoder we just print a summary of it to the console then we compile it using a specific learning rate and then we train it now what remains to be done is running the script and see if it works but before that uh, i just want to 
only consider, let's say, like 500 samples here of the uh, um, train set. Uh, that's because I really don't want to bother that much about the quality of the training, but just like see if it works. And otherwise, it's going to take like a lot of time because I mean, it's 60,000 uh, samples. Okay, so yeah, let's get started and see if this works or if we have like some uh, or any errors. Let's run this and oh yeah we got an error let's see what this is yeah it seems this so x train dot reshape oh yeah 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 i know what's going on here so here i used a comma but this shouldn't be a comma this should be just a, a plus sign okay so let's replace that i guess it's up here yes so this is a plus and this is also gonna, gonna be a plus down there okay so now let's run this and see if this works. Okay, yeah, it seems like this is working fine. Yeah, here we go. Super quick training and that's because we're using only 500 uh, samples and only 20 epics, but it worked. That's fantastic. Okay, so and as you can see here, you also have the summary, the summary of the encoder model, the summary of the decoder with all of its architecture laid out and the summary of the autoencoder down here. And here we have like all of the uh, training epochs with the loss for each epoch. Right. Okay, so this is really it for today. So by now you should be able to uh, compile and train your autoencoder model. So next time what we'll be doing is actually like saving uh, the trained model. And that's because we want to save it, reload it so that we can analyze the results. And by the way, we're gonna be starting looking at some of the results or in other words, like images or handwritten digits that will be generated uh, by the model itself. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, please remember to leave a like. If you're not a sub subscriber of the Sound of AI channel, please uh, consider doing so. And I guess I'll see you next time. Cheers for now.